Our next speaker is Dr. Crystal Makowski. Um, Crystal serves as Vice President of Special Projects for the ARC of Jacksonville in Jacksonville, Florida. She has served in various capac capacities within this organization over her 12-year tenure. Dr. Makowski helped create and served as the Director of Florida's post-secondary transition program called the ARC of Jacksonville on Campus Transition at the University of North Florida for eight years, which she still remains on that steering committee. She then transitioned into a consult, consulting position to develop the operations at the ARC of Jacksonville Village and became its vice president to implement position, to implement its initial first year of having residents. Currently, Dr. Mikowski's position focuses on researching and identifying national best practice in employment, work readiness, adult day training, post-secondary transition, independent living, and health wellness. She enacts as an internal uh, consultant to various departments. Previous to her work at the ARC of Jacksonville, Dr. Mikowski served as an employment specialist for another service provider for two years. Dr. Mikowski is certified rehabilitation counselor and has a doctorate in organizational leadership. We welcome Crystal. It's an honor to be here, and I'm so honored to um, actually substitute for our CEO, Jim Whitaker. Um, he is a board member for Together for Choice, and um, he would have loved to have been here. He is doing a huge um, fundraiser, our only fundraiser, and so um, Sister Rosemary, if you could put some blessings and prayers his way, that would be much uh, appreciated. And um, I wanted to thank Ms. Accordia for the hospitality and for putting on such an amazing, amazing event and bringing everyone here. So kind of from my background, um, they created a new position for me because I've been VP of a lot of things. So now it's just special projects covers whatever and anything the board and gym wants. Um, so what I wanted to do is not just bore you guys with statistics and things of that nature, but kind of bring you um, some insight into our journey of trying to be an innovative organization and to be progressive and aiming to have best practices. When we talk a lot about best practices, it's important to note that there is no cookie cutter best practice. From the research and from um, touring the nation's um, best organizations, including Ms. Accordia about a year ago, every organization, every population, every region, every city, every demographic is different. So a best practice is really catering to the needs of the individuals and to their families and to the community. But I wanted to um, give some insight into what, about the Arc Jacksonville. Um, yesterday I heard a presenter saying that they were surpri like, pre pleasantly surprised that um, we are part of the Together for Choice and we're very, very much honored. So we wanna share kind of why we are part of this as well as what we have found within the last couple of years. So our mission is to serve people with intellectual and developmental disabilities to achieve their full potential to participate in community life and our vision is to create a community where disability is a distinction without a difference, where individuals will have the choices on how they live, learn, work, worship, and play. And choice is there purposely. That was put in six years ago in our strategic plan. So this is a very nice marriage of being here at the conference and being um, a part of the organization. Okay, so our history, the, like most arcs, it starts from the families. The families seeking what's, what is there for their child? How can they be included within the community? How can they have a meaningful life? However that looks like. We've been in existence within Jacksonville for over 50 years. We've went through different transformations. We've even had a preschool, a senior center. Um, those have been phased out, but we're always looking at the families and the individuals. On our board, we do have um, individuals that we have served in different services, such as employment, and we have a majority of parents that serve on our board. Oops. 
play a video. Hopefully it works. <laughs> For five decades, the ARC has been innovating to achieve... Oh. It's not showing on for you guys, sorry. ...things that were never dreamt of before. It's achieve things... Okay, I'm having a little technical difficulty with this. For five decades, For five decades, the ARC has been innovating to achieve things that were never dreamt of before. It's made a tremendous difference, not only in, in our lives, but in our son's life. I'm sorry. I'm going to need a minute. I'm sorry. For five decades, the ARC has been innovating to achieve things that were never dreamt of before. It's made a tremendous difference, not only in, in our lives, but in our son's life. Well, I think because of the ARC, my son has um, certainly had a richer, fuller, better life than if they did not exist and I'm so grateful that they do and that we found them and that they found us. Art is a blessing. The Art Jacksonville provides advanced education choices with the on-campus transition program at the University of North Florida. OCT provides the support and education needed to help those with intellectual and developmental disabilities to be their best and achieve more. The classes, they were tough. I I kind of stuck um, to, I kind of stuck with it. And all my professors, they were very um, nice to me. Yeah. And they gave me like a lot of homework. When I go to school, it's mostly socialization. I like to socialize with my friends. When you've succeeded at school, the next dream is to find a job. Through our community employment program, the ARC Jacksonville teamed with the Chamber of Commerce to expand opportunities in the world of work. I clean the offices. I do whatever they want me to because I read the reward a week afterwards. What's that? Paycheck! <laughs> I work at a fast food restaurant, though, too. It is, um, is, I enjoy it a lot. 
to be honest though too, it can be um, challenging times at first, but I make it through it through the day though too. A job shows independent and it, uh, it teaches us the right things in people's lives. And I think we should embrace those things in life. Embracing independence is about having choices and making them. The vision of the Arc Jacksonville has always been to create a community where disability is a distinction without a difference, where individuals have choices about how they learn, worship, work, play, and live. I just think someday all our family members are going to be gone, basically. So then what are we going to do? If we don't live on our own, then how are we going to learn? With that in mind, our next big innovation became the Arc Jacksonville Village. This open neighborhood is redefining community for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, not just for Jacksonville, but as a model for the entire nation. But the Arc Village would be good, though, to us for those who want to be on their own and that's ready to leave the nest. The Arc Jacksonville Village is about lifestyle choices. Individuals will choose to live in a community of peers, but not in a structured program. They'll make shopping choices, employment choices, and social choices. They'll learn from their mistakes, just like the rest of us, with only a safety net of staff support when they choose it. We've seen the everyday miracles accomplished through dedication and hard work. And while we celebrate the accomplishments achieved over five decades, we know there is so much more to come. That's why the Arc Jacksonville invites you to join us in shaping our future. Together, we can achieve things not yet dreamed. With the Arc's help, um, disabled people can, can be as functional as normal people. I felt, I felt really happy inside that, that I accomplished something. August awesome and cool, besides things I know. The art feel all right. I think the art is, it's a big part of my life. It's my, it's my family. And I just wanna, uh, I might cry, but I just wanna feel honored that the art has been so supportive in my life. So it's been like my whole story. So that was a snapshot of some of the innovative things that we have been working on with the Art Jacksonville. Um, just on a personal note, um, I practically grew up with the Art Jacksonville. Um, I've been with them for 12 years. Um, I started with them when I was 20 um, as the director of the on-campus transition program. So that shows my age, but um, I've been blessed to see an organization that provides Tra uh, traditional services, supported employment, um, adult day training, group home into something that they're wanting more. And it's not just because the staff wanted more, it's because the parents demanded more. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the on-campus transition at UNF, and then we'll move on to kind of our new initiatives. Um, again, a group of parents, passionate, fierce advocates, were basically thinking during the junior year of their child's high school, what's gonna happen after high school? You have kind of two options in Florida, adult day training or supported employment. And for many of the individuals, there needs to be a bridge. There needs to be some more preparation in order to be successful in exploration of different possibilities, what happens if they want to live on their own. And so um, the University of North Florida, our at the time, President Delaney, um, was approached by this group of parents, and he's like, sure, why not? Let's, let's increase our diversity, let's embrace this new type of um, 
uh, population within the campus because this is not only going to be a social service for the students, but this is going to be transformational um, experience for the actual matriculated students. So we've been existing at um, OCT for to, since 2006. Our students audit UNF courses. They're not taking any courses for you know credit or doing the work that a matriculated student is expected, but everything is person-centered, um, modified syllabi, but the biggest piece, and you heard from Biz, um, who was on the video, there's a lot of socialization, being with the peers. Um, we require our students to be 90% out within the campus. Um, they join clubs and organizations. They have different type of student mentors. And we've been um, extremely lucky to be an actual AmeriCorps site. So we have college students acting as AmeriCorps members to provide mentorship and work readiness, to assist them with internships on campus, socialization, health and wellness. So we try to be as comprehensive as possible by the time they graduate. Um, that they are ready for employment, and currently we have an 86% employment rate with um, about 60 graduates um, since um, 2006, so we're very pleased for that. Um, we were the first post-secondary transition program, and um, due to the successes of these students, we now have 15 other um, post-secondary transition programs within Florida. So that was an, um, a, quite an explosion with regards to those different type of opportunities. Then, okay, so within two years, we went from three students the first year to 18 to 31. And so when, um, again, that special projects um, title, why not have a residential program? So let's keep on innovating, let's keep on having that going. And actually that opportunity came from the president of UNF himself. Um, why are they not living on campus? Why are they not having residential options? They go to college, great, so then they live with their parents, or where do they go? So we actually um, have different models. We have on-campus housing in the senior level. They have a lazy river around it, amazing um, type of amenities, as well as off-campus student housing apartments where they live in four bedroom, four bathroom apartments, and we have college students acting as independent living mentors that are paid that teach them on a daily basis how to cook, clean, financial management, accessing the community. So they're not just thrown there with, you know, um, college students. They have supports to help them grow into be more mature individuals and increase and enhance their decision making. Then, so that happened. Then the next year, we um, are like, what do we do in the summer? What do we do for individuals that want to explore independent living? Independent living may not be for everyone, and we recognize that. But what, do, what kind of opportunity can we provide parents and individuals that are curious about what would it be like to live on my own? Am I ready to live on my own? So we created our summer residential life experience program, which happens on the off-campus student housing apartments, where it's very like an intensive summer camp and independent living. And we had to revise it a couple times because the participants said, we're too busy, we wanna relax, chill, and do whatever, play we, and just, like any other adult, have more leisure time. So we are, any type of service delivery change is based on student, participant, family feedback. So we did make those changes, and what we now have expanded is we're not only focusing on youth, but older individuals. We've had individuals that were not quite sure if they were wanting to go into a group home to the Art Jacksonville Village, or if they want to get an apartment and utilize a Medicaid waiver for supported living. A lot of times, independent living, like in this model where there's not a lot of supports, is not the right match. And it's really great assessment for the families to realize, wow, this is how much I thought my child knew how to do. We have a lot of work to do. I thought they would take a bath every day, but then they realized, well, they prompted them every day. Did you put shampoo, did you, you know? So it really gives a great assessment to see where someone is, and we provide um, a goal list of what they need to accomplish or some government assistance to assist them and recommendations for different living arrangements within their communities. The next, we had the Explore program through our public service grant. 
So we hire students graduating, they're getting jobs, but as many of us know, jobs are not typically full-time for the individuals we're serving. So it could be five hours a week, 15, 20, um, sometimes th obviously a job may not be forever. So what we're getting from the parents were, what else is there for my child? Um, they're regressing in skills because they were not engaged in the OCT program or they were regressing because they're not working. So what we created was a um, community inclusive program where um, it's enrichment and employment readiness focus. So we've had that since about 2012 and we utilize that as a feeder program to see are individuals really interested in employment? Because what we hear a lot of times is the parents are like, I want my child to work, I want my child to work. The uh, participant says, yeah, my mom wants me to work. Then we get them placed, and then they're like, they quit, I'm not working. So, you know, th this is something that they can always return to to gain more skills and enrichment. And again, it's about choice. Do they want to maybe go into ADT that's more about a meaningful day? Do they want to actually really pursue employment? And we believe in experiential um, training because the only way that you learn or you understand yourself or raise your self-awareness and self-determination is actually by doing and having that exposure. So again, what's next? So in um, 2016, we opened the Art Jacksonville Village. However, the conversations with regards to the Art Jacksonville Village happened many years ago while um, we're at OCT. And um, just to share something personal, um, I was the OCT director at the time, and they mentioned the Art Jacksonville Village. I'm like, oh, that's, you know, seems like a great idea. We had a lot of success with the residential program. We even had a graduate with our OCT residential program. Their parents moved to New Zealand, and she stayed in Jacksonville because Jacksonville was her home and she wasn't leaving. And so that kind of inspired other conversations of what do we do for individuals that are wanting to live independently or, or with some, you know, moderate supports and don't want to live with their parents. Um, so some, again, parents, they had a kind of a town hall meeting with Jim and basically said, this is what we wanted to do. Um, I'm not quite sure how far back the conversations with Jack Kozak, um, with uh, Noah's Ark and uh, Betsy Farmer with Promise occurred, but definitely there was getting traction. And um, with that collaboration with them and um, with Ms. Accordia, Jim um, loves to visit here and uh, to look at best practices, <clears throat> we were able to open the Art Jacksonville Village. Um, however, I do distinctly remember at OCT, the CEO of um, Arc National came and I thought he just you know, wanted to get to learn about the project and be supportive and things like that. To my surprise, there was hesitancy um, uh, with regards to this concept. Um, even with myself going to different conferences, because I started doing um, consulting work on the Art Jacksonville Village, I, my colleagues, I'm a certified rehab counselor, and they know of the integration and inclusion with um, the OCT program would come and say, basically, shame on you, what are you doing? You need to leave the Art Jacksonville. And I was just taken aback because First of all, we're here about expanding choices and different options. Second of all, you don't even have a child with a disability, and so what do you know? Are you going to take care of someone um, when their parents pass? So obviously I was very diplomatic and you know, smiled and screamed later. And, um, <laughs> but this concept is now gaining traction because I was at um, ARC National, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I went up to the CEO, and he's like, oh, so how's the village going? Actually, it's going fantastic. Let me tell you about the amenities that are listed over here. And by the way, 75 of our 121 residents are employed competitively within the community. Really? Yes. Can you write me a research report? Mark that under other research special projects I'm gonna to have to do. But they want to have a conversation with other ARCs with regards to this concept. So that's huge and that's amazing. Um, I think that's a really good feed. I, he uh, mentioned that, and I, I'm not disparaging him, but he was just expressing what other ARCs concerns were. But he said, 
I think we need to really look at this as an option. Give me the report and let's, you know, having this conversation on a national level. So i um, very pleased um, that's happening with the ARC. So some pictures, um, we try to ensure that the community is lively as possible. Um, we have um, some amazing donors. We have some incredible staff. Jim is phenomenally a amazing visionary and um, a great interior decorator. Um, he's very committed to high quality and um, our residents, we want to give them things to do on site if they choose to. Like anyone else, if you want to be at your home or enjoy your community, direct community, you should. But we also want to encourage for our individuals to get out as much as possible. So we have activities, we have different auxiliary services that, you know, they go grocery shopping, there's activities out in the community, there's some on site, and we have a lot of community partnerships. We have extremely increased our um, corporate volunteerism um, by maybe 200% at the um, Art Jacksonville Village. So um, they are getting interaction, kind of like the OZT, they're getting mentorship, and they're making plans and going out on their own. Now, safety. I know that sometimes becomes a concern. We do have, um, can I say security officer, a uh, courtesy officer on site, and we do have live-in staff um, that are there in case of emergencies, push buttons, but we do ensure that our staff are keeping tabs um, with our residents. They meet weekly. Um, they provide support living if they're private pay. Um, CMS and um, did approve um, an ACA that the Medicaid waiver can be um, provided on site. So some of our um, individuals are served by different Medicaid waiver providers, but they can access um, through private fees some of our activities and services. Um, another um, innovative thing that we did was, well, we know that healthcare management is something that can be very difficult with our individuals when they're living away from home. So we had written a grant and we have um, a three-year grant with the Riverside Hospital where we actually have nursing students coming in and doing practicum and field experiences with our individuals. However, we didn't want to be ARC-centric. Part of the grant and the deal is that they go to ICFs, they go to other diff group homes, they go to other agencies to show the vast difference of um, the, the developmental disability spectrum. So we definitely want to give nursing um, students that exposure and it's something that is most likely going to be renewed. Okay, another choice, we do have group homes and um, we are extremely proud of our group homes. We do have five group homes that are located throughout Jacksonville and each group home has their own different type of theme. Um, we have one that's more kind of for the younger individuals that are more a uh, bit more independent, but not quite ready to live in a place such as the Art Jacksonville Village, but they do want to have employment and such. So they're in kind of the more, um, I don't know, like funkier part of town where there's lots to do and they take the bus and um, we, the staff encourage them in skill acquisition. Then we have to the other point where we have a behavioral, more focused um, group homes as well as our newest um, renovated group home, the Caden home, is actually geared towards the aging process. Um, part of um, some of the researches and the concerns is what do we do with this aging population? And Ms. Accordia has an incredible from birth to end of um, life um, services, but that really inspired us to look at what do we do for our population because we don't know where we're going to expand next and when we're answering what's next. So with this group home, um, it's already ADA accessible, but even beyond that, in anticipation if residents are gonna need wheelchairs in the future as they age out. Um, and then from there, we still need to figure out what to do because in Florida, they're not, um, nursing homes tend to not accept um, our population, even if it's Alzheimer's and dementia, I guess, having a developmental disabilities makes Alzheimer's something beyond the needs of what they can handle. Makes no sense to me, but um, that will be our next advocacy um, project. So last year, we received a $300,000 um, legislative special appropriation, and basically what's happening in Florida, uh, do, uh, do we have any Florida vendors? Okay, yeah. So, um, 
WIOA and the CMS um, rule settings and then with kind of up in the air about what's happening with the 14C certifications. What are we doing? What's gonna happen? And so we have collaborated with uh, different ARC um, organizations, but there's really not a great answer because a lot of providers vary in sizes and what they provide and what we do in case the 14C goes away the one thing is we don't want to let go of anybody. Um, and I'll explain in a different slide kind of what we've been finding um, with regards to that. And also how do we revamp our services to meet um, A, individuals 18 to 24 years that desire employment training with the goal of obtaining community integrative employment, individuals 25 and older who desire to transition away from said minimum wage work. And for those that are 25 and older, and you know what? If some of the minimum wage is not available, but I really don't want to work, what do we do? And I know that um, the, one of the next presenters are going to talk about what a meaningful um, day is uh, within the Accordia. So um, I'm looking forward to um, getting feedback because we don't have the answers. We're in year two of a three-year research project. So what we focused on was best practices, employment, and communication uh, inclusion. And what we wanted to do is look at work regarding emotional well-being, enrichment of cultural experiences, and education. At the Art Jacksonville, we try to be as comprehensive as possible. A lot of organizations um, tend to be, it's work or it's ADT. But we're not looking at the rest of the person. So uh, what we have done with the ability of having AmeriCorps, um, having the special appropriation money, um, we did not get year two because of the Parkland. Um, shooting, so uh, money was dispersed elsewhere, but we have um, obtained some grants to continue looking at best um, practices. Um, but we are, are very committed, and Jim has even found other ways to fund extra staff to ensure that we have community navigators to help individuals to go out into the community, whether for volunteer experience or just enrichment. So kind of what we found um, around the nation is that um, robust work uh, readiness programs focuses on a mixture of curricula and in the field experiences. So that was something that uh, I had found on the travels and on doing site visits is that classroom based as well simulated work on site and then actually having them out there and being exposed and learning. So um, with regards to work readiness, we found that to be one of the best ways um, to um, implement that. Utilizing VR funding streams. Um, I was really quite surprised how many states, and I know VR, I, I, I don't, do we have anyone from VR here? Okay, so I know some um, providers have different relationships with their state or regional vocational rehabilitation departments. Um, in Florida, right now, they are recognizing that we're in a crisis mode, and so they have m millions and millions of dollars dedicated to on-the-job training, um, to curricula-based training, any type of work readiness training to start providing employment opportunities. Um, so something that um, needs to, you may want to consider within your organization if you provide employment services. Uh, Dream-inspired person-centered planning. So dream boards are really popular in Florida now. And it's a way that, um, that the individual can express themselves, if they're, especially if they're nonverbal, and that's something that can be revisited when they're meeting with their um, support team. And that dream board may change, but that's through exposure and engaging and not guessing. So um, that's something that we are going to be utilizing within our own organization. I'm not saying it's the best practice, but the national trend is the phasing out of the facility-based um, minimum wage work. Um, so that's um, something very difficult uh, that we're facing in Florida, what to do. 40 year, people for 40 years, they, they go, they have their friends, they have routine, they enjoy, whether despite the amount of the you know, paper check that they receive, that's taking away a choice um, for our individuals. So that's something that we were really looking at. And to uh, be quite frank and asking some, it's called transformation, some organizations that have gone through transformation, meaning non-facility based um, settings, they literally pick 30 days or 90 days out 
a date, wrote a letter to the families and closed their doors, and then the ones that cannot go into competitive integrated employment, start find some, you need to find somewhere to go. Um, very unethical in my opinion. Um, so it's very tough uh, to see that being a trend. Um, also for the ones that organizations that have been successful um, with regards to transformation, um, they have higher Medicaid waiver reimbursement rates. We have a one to 10 ratio in Florida and that barely covers staff. So very difficult. Um, places like Colorado, Massachusetts have much higher reimbursement ratings. So um, that's something that we're going to have to uh, lobby within Florida and to really look at it. High collaboration with parents and families um, and their supports is really needed. Um, enhanced professional development through state and national certifications for the staff. Having qualified, like in the previous um, uh, presentation, that's something that we have been looking at and what to do with our staff to make sure that they're more qualified because change is happening and change is tough and we need to um, be able to deal with that change. Um, improve expectations of person services, um, person-centered services. Um, one of the things we did find is a development of club concept for enrichment services. Um, we're really liking the idea where there is personal choice but it's organized and it's a, we're able to work with it logistically for those that are interested in just um, enrichment activities within the community. Also, we're looking at doing a social enterprise where it would be a 50-50 model where 50% would have um, intellectual developmental disabilities and 50 would not. We found some really great social enterprises that were profitable and sustainable when that model was actually used and was a pure mentoring culture. So no one got paid higher, they were all tr treated equally, but the morale was there to create that culture. So what we've been doing, um, our initiatives, We've done some on-site um, uh, small work groups with car washes at minimum wage. We identified um, 20, or, I'm sorry, 35 individuals to kind of phase out of um, our sheltered workshop to go into enrichment. So that just started October 15th. We also have now small work groups. Instead of enclave model, um, we have like Fields Automotive that has various locations. Um, as well as Chartwells that actually directly hire small groups. And then we send an ADT staff with them. So they're their employee, not contracted with us. We have implemented the project discovery curricula, which is simulation um, type curricula, but also um, out in the community. So we have that 50-50 model with regards to that, as well as internships. So what's next for us? Um, we are part of the ARC of US and Institute for Commun Commun uh, Community Inclusion Provider Transformation Network, which is a federal study, and they're working with us to give us advice and guidance on some best practices, what we can do for, that will be ethical and the right thing for our families and for the individuals that we serve. Um, we created a new program and services uh, board committee to address the sub-minimum wage issue. Um, we've, like I mentioned, piloted the new program, and we have higher collaboration with leadership with vocational rehab and our Medicaid waiver agency, which is the Agency for Persons with Disabilities. And we are um, developing an aging com committee to address client needs of what are we going to do next for individuals, because the village is wonderful, it's great, but we still need to figure out what's next. Questions? So, if ARC National is asking for your success data, do you have a sense that they might one day become a proponent for intentional communities as an option? Absolutely. I, um, I am expected to compile all of the results, and I'll probably be reaching out to all of you as well, but that will be submitted to our legislation. What services does ARC offer for the severe and profound DD population? We currently have a STRIVE um, program that's more therapeutic, it's more in-house. We're not quite sure if that's something that we're going to continue, um, but it's gonna be dependent on what we do with our aging committee. So they're going to be the ones to really figure out how do we continue serving because we don't want to throw anyone away. 
when dealing with nonverbal clients in a so-called dream-inspired planning session, how do you avoid response bias on behalf of the staff, particularly when an organization has an ideological interest in the outcome? We utilize our AmeriCorps members. So what we've noticed is that we're using like college students, um, individuals that they're not very familiar with. And so that way that they're um, not being influenced as well as exposing them to like YouTube videos, like form a variety of things. It's not a rush um, process. It takes time, but it's with someone that they're not necessarily trained to please. What is ARC doing to support for those who need 24-hour support? So with regards to the 24-hour supports, that depends within the group homes. So it's the Medicaid waiver um, that will provide for that. Now in the village, we have a small group of individuals that do require 24-7 support, but they utilize their Medicaid waiver providers. We do not do um, supported living in that matter. How about for your nonverbal clients? With regards to nonverbal, we look at assistive technology. Um, so depending on the program, for example, OCT, if they know sign language or if they have a, um, some device that can communicate their needs, then they're eligible. If not, it would not be a safe environment for them to be there. We would direct them to a different program. Okay, thank you very much, Crystal. Thank you.